Okay, everyone, welcome back. Let's do a couple examples with how to read or connect these ideas of position, velocity, and acceleration. So um, over here, we were given or we are given a velocity function, and here's the graph that goes with that function, okay? So it's a velocity function for the particle moving on a horizontal line when zero is less than less than or equal to t, less than or equal to 5, where t is measured in seconds. Okay, so this gives us the velocity function for an object that's moving on a straight line um, on 0 to 5 seconds. When t equals 0, the particle is at the origin. Use the diagram to answer the questions. So some of you guys might be wondering, like, okay, if the particle is starting at the origin, how come my graph doesn't start here? Well, that's because this is not a graph of the position of the particle. This is a graph of the velocity. So at time equals 0, um, the graph, or I'm sorry, at time equals 0, the particle already has a positive velocity. So it looks like the particle is traveling um, 7 at 7, right, at time equals 0. So it's already moving when I start the time. For which values is the particle stationary? So if we look back to the other video that I posted, we want to look when the particle has stopped and that's when velocity is zero. So let's go back to our graph and where does the graph equal zero? Well, it equals zero here and here. So if you guys can annotate this, because we know Ms. Lopez loves to annotate. So it's stationary when velocity is equal to zero. And so it is stationary at t equals 2.657 and at t equals 4.324 because at those points, velocity is equal to zero. Okay. So now we want to know at what point is the particle moving left? Let's go back to the table that I was looking at or that I made in the other video. So the particle is moving left when velocity is negative. So if you guys remember, negative is when the graph is going to be below the x-axis. So the graph is moving left for this whole interval. So the way that we would express that is we would just write the interval from 2.657 less than t less than 4.324. And we always want to justify because velocity is negative. Okay, um, we don't have the Desmos animation for now, so I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, or actually no, we're, we're going to skip this for right now. Um, if I want you to evaluate um, V of 3, you can do it in Desmos, but I think this would be a really good time for you to practice using your calculator. So let me minimize this and open up my calculator. So you're going to go ahead and type that velocity function into Y1 like I've done so right here. And then I'm going to go second mode to get to the main screen. To evaluate the velocity at time 3, I'm just going to go and tell my calculator, hey, at 3 seconds, how fast is the particle traveling? And it's traveling negative 0 0.707. Okay, that's going to be the speed of the particle. Let me get back to my one note. Okay, because I just evaluated that 0. Negative zero, seven, zero, seven. Okay. Now I want to find the value at that time, um, but the derivative, but taking the derivative. And you can still use your calculator for that. So let me pull up my calculator again. And here's a quick refresher on that. So we're going to go to math. We're going to go down to and derive. Um, I use the variable x. So I'm going to put x in the differential down here. I'm going to go to vars, scroll right. I'm going to tell them, hey, take the derivative of the function that I put in for y1 at the value 3. And that's going to give me negative 1. That's going to give me that value. <laughs> Let me just write that down over here. Negative 1.577. Okay. So now here is another piece of information that we need, and we're about to fill out this table because velocity and acceleration have a relationship and it tells us whether we're speeding up, slowing down, or whether we're completely stopped. Because the velocity at time t is negative and because the acceleration, because if we remember the derivative of the velocity function gives us the acceleration. So this tells me velocity. This tells me acceleration because it's the derivative of the velocity. Because they have the same sign, they're both negative. 
we would say that at time equals three, the particle is speeding up. So anytime they have the same sign, a particle is speeding up. If the signs were opposite, then it would be slowing down. Okay, so let's take a look at here. So over here, velocity is positive, and over here, acceleration would be positive. So when those two things happen at the same time, a particle is speeding up. However, if velocity is positive but acceleration is negative, then our particle is slowing down. Okay. If velocity is positive and acceleration is zero, we've got a constant speed. There is no acceleration. There is no slowing down. Okay. Now, if we've got velocity is negative, but acceleration is positive, think about what the signs are. One is positive, one is negative. What does that mean? If you said it's slowing down, you're absolutely correct. It's slowing down. Okay. Now let's do velocity is negative and acceleration is negative. What do you think that means? If you said speeding up, you're absolutely correct. Okay. And then finally, oh, if we've got negative velocity, but again, acceleration is zero, we've got constant speed. Okay. Now, this whole bottom row, if velocity is zero, that means my object has stopped completely. Stopped. So anytime velocity is zero, um, my object has stopped. Okay, thanks for watching. We've got one more video after this. Thanks for sticking with it.